Rising wages are now replacing corporate greed as the go-to establishment scapegoat for inflation. And even that excuse is starting to falter. A few weeks ago, I talked about how central banks use profits and wages as scapegoats for the inflation they themselves cause. They do that to get people to fight each other instead of blaming them. During the inflation of the past two years, it's been mostly establishment politicians going after profit, so-called greedflation. Now we get the next shoe to drop with the Wall Street Journal today worrying that, quote, wageflation will frustrate the Fed's heroic efforts to stop the inflation it caused. As the article put it, quote, as greedflation starts to fade, wageflation creeps in. It notes that profit margins are returning to normal as unsold goods from the impending recession overwhelm the illusions that have been elevating profits so far. I mentioned these the other day. They're product shortages, accounting quirks, and lack of investment. But now wages are finally creeping up as workers are, quote, slowly recapturing more of the economic pie. In raw numbers, wages are now a higher share of corporate value add than pre-pandemic, with labor costs up 6% in the past year. Now, it sounds like a lot, but it's barely beating out inflation of 5.3%. Profits, meanwhile, are crawling at just 1.6% growth. That's nearly 4% down after inflation. The journal naturally blames labor shortages. I shared a tweet the other day that in America, 105 million Americans are out of the workforce. That's up 15 million since the worst of the 2008 crisis. The journal goes on to portray workers as fighting a pitched battle against corporate profits and a well-meaning Fed who's just trying to keep everybody safe. But the truth is workers are not bonkers to want more. They are simply finally getting the drip-down secondhand inflation. This is the Cantillon effect where inflation is pure profit to the first recipients, starting with the money printer himself, then it progressively trickles down in weaker and weaker form until the last recipients who get money long after process prices have risen. In other words, they actually make a loss. Think of a counterfeiting operation who makes pure profit when they first pass the $100 bill. Prices haven't risen yet. While some elderly pensioner years later finally gets a cost of living adjustment long after the prices have risen. So she took one for the team in the meantime. So this evolution from greedflation to wageflation is simply the Cantillon process. Trillions starting at the federal government, then the banks, then the corporations, finally to workers. So far that Cantillon parade has robbed the median American worker of almost 8% of his wages since Biden took office, meaning the wageflation that the journal is currently worried about is barely making a dent. In fact, it's matching the hit from the double dip recession in 1979 to 81, which was the worst in the past 50 years, meaning workers are doing the worst in 50 years, once again, before this recession even hits in full, but everything is fine. So what's next? Any prospect of workers ever making up that 8% will run head into the coming recession when both wages and workers are typically slashed. In fact, the latest job numbers say even workers drip down Cantillon inflation has ground to a halt as full-time work is now evaporating and gig work is picking up the slack. At this point, unless government radically scales back its economic manipulations, which will not happen, the lost real wages of these past few years, like those of the 1970s, will probably never be made up. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.